in this tutorial I wanted to uh, cover final renders and some of the settings associated with a final render. Um, before I jump into um, an actual final render, I think I'll, I'll, I'll first discuss uh, the preview window, um, how the quality uh, settings can be used in the preview window, what they mean. So up until Service Pack 3, um, which has just been released, the preview window was fixed at what is called good quality. Um, good quality is what I would recommend you almost always use, um, as it is going to be how you get the most interactive viewport for setting up your rendering, changing the materials and the environments. So that's the first thing to, to say about the preview window. With SP3, we did allow we have allowed you to change the uh, quality in the preview window. It was actually a feature that was in beta, and then uh, we took it out, and we put it back in. And the reason is because uh, some uh, appearances and may not uh, you may not be able to distinguish all the uh, effects you really need to distinguish at a lower quality setting. Um, so this in this case, I've got a, a glass. Uh, appearance on, on the top housing of this model and unless I'm at a uh, better or best or best quality setting I may not get all the uh, detail through that glass that I actually need so uh, a recommend workflow would though would be to only toggle a uh, better quality or best quality in the preview window to get just the one thing you're looking for right and then switch back to good so that you've got um, the most interactive viewport that you can that you can get. Uh, so as I started to show you can switch that quality right here and you'll notice if I go say up to best you can see how much more slowly this is chugging along to, to, to update and that's why it's not a, a way you would want to do all of your work. Uh, some materials are a lot slower than others. Uh, glasses, one of the as, as an appearance is going to be slower so um, this is sort of a a worse case for this, um, but again, it's it's to see something you might need to turn it on. I would recommend you go back to good quality to get the um, you know, overall performance that you'd want out of the preview window. Uh, as it pertains to a final render, if you use this uh, menu here to set the quality, when you use the button to initiate a final render, it will honor the quality setting that you have set here. So let's just do that. Um, Right now, we'll click Final Render. You'll get some information thrown at you up top here about what's what's happening in some of the settings. You'll see these what we call buckets um, dance through the screen here, and there's basically a, a bucket for each core in the system. So I have an eight-core system. I see eight of those uh, running through. If you had a dual core, you'd see two, or quad core, you see four. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually close this now that's finished. We come back here. We look at the preview window, which again is currently set to good quality and it is pretty good just to uh, assign your appearances and change your environment and frame your shot. You will notice the shadows are quite blotchy, um, there's, the edges are, are anti aliased. So you can, let's go back to that rendering I just did which is something you can do either go to settings and recall last rendered image or go to the render menu and say recall last rendered image. So that was the last rendering I did and you'll see Shadows are much smoother underneath. Edges are anti-aliased quite nicely, so um, it's a pretty nice rendering. It took 14.5 seconds. In our settings dialog, you can also initiate a final rendering at a specific quality. So remember I said whatever quality the preview is currently set to is what this button will initiate, um, and that's what current quality will 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 do as well, but you could come in here and initiate a better, best, or max quality. Rather than actually um, kick off those renderings, I'm going to go back to my previous rendering. I had done some earlier in a uh, different uh, in a different orientation, so just looking here, this was a, a good quality rendering. This one took just, un just under 14 seconds. Uh, I then actually put it up to uh, best. I skipped better. I went right to best, and you can see this rendering took uh, just over a minute. The difference is, um, if you look at the this glass material, you'll see um, the detail. You can see more of of the glasses at a, at a higher quality. Um, essentially, there's more um, 
light rays being cast around in the scene, and the result is you get uh, get more detail. I also tried a max setting for this particular model, and very little difference to be seen here. Uh, the main difference is uh, perhaps a little bit of reduced noise on the inside of the glass, uh, but that's about all you see, and this max quality rendering took nearly five minutes. So the important point here is that for most of the work you do, good is probably as good as you're going to need. Um, and uh, you know, for me, certainly this is this is quite a nice rendering for me, and I only spent 14 seconds on it. So, um, you know, you'd only need to use the higher quality settings, um, depending on your your scene. Best and max, those are things typically reserved for doing renderings like uh, where you've got interiors uh, where light is really bouncing off walls and um, maybe only a little bit of light is coming in through windows, things like that. But so most of the ca cases where you have sort of a, a desktop or a tabletop item like this would be um, good or better is going to be um, a good enough setting to use. Another important point about uh, your final rendering, of course, is your image resolution. So um, we can control that in the settings dialog. You see we have a uh, image resolution section here, currently set to 640 by 480. Below it, there's also some presets. I'm actually going to use one of these presets. If I go to 640 by 360, what you'll see uh, the, is the, the preview window has actually uh, changed its aspect ratio to honor the aspect ratio defined by that width and height. Um, now, that's different than what you get in the final render. In the final render, you're going to get physically 640 pixels, in this case, by 360 pixels. So the preview window uh, will honor the aspect ratio. When you do the final render, you're actually going to get a rendering of that size. So let's just do something bizarre, like, say, uh, 800 by uh, 100. Um, you see this is rather bizarre here. And it doesn't matter what size I make this. Um, not until I do a final render will I get legitimately 800 pixels wide by 100 pixels high. Anytime you can hit this abort button to just abort a final rendering, good thing to know. Um, so that's how you control the uh, image resolution. I'll go back to 640 by 480 here for the rest of this. The last point about uh, creating a final rendering is, of course, generating the image on disk. Um, so uh, when you're looking at your preview window, you can um, save that image at any time just by using the right mouse button, bringing up this Save Preview Image uh, dialog, and it'll dump this out as, uh, as an image. There's, uh, sorry, I dismissed it kind of quick there. There's quite a few formats that you can choose from. Um, Maybe talk about those again in a minute. So going back to our uh, final rendering, I'll, I'll bring back our last rendered image again. Um, I kind of breezed over it earlier, but in case you didn't notice, uh, one nice thing is that we keep a, a pool of the last 10 renderings that you did. Um, so you know, these were renderings I did earlier in the day, and I can just toggle through them. And uh, at any one of these, uh, you can go ahead and uh, choose to hit the Save Image button. So Save Image, I see the same dialog I just did a second ago. Um, and a lot of formats here. You know, Some of them are reserved for things you might only use if you were doing some post-processing uh, you know, in a Photoshop environment or something like that. Um, you know, most distribu distribution or presentation stuff, you could probably use JPEG. Um, the, in the Render Settings dialog, um, there's this default image file format set the target currently. Um, it's changing this, so let's say JPEG is what I typically use. I could go ahead and set that and then um, come back in here, save image, and JPEG's my default. So that's how you generate the, the, the final image, um, your final render, save it, and that's it.